Welcome to Chamber Exchange, a TV show. My name is Tim Murray, President and CEO of the Worcester Regional Chamber of Commerce. And Chamber Exchange, a TV show, is an opportunity with our guests to have conversations relating to economic development and jobs uh, and other kind of initiatives that are happening here in central Massachusetts. I want to thank Bank Hometown, who sponsors the show and helps make it happen. And pleased to have with us in this segment, Kathleen Gagney, who is the Executive Director of Mechanics Hall, and James Goldsberry, who is a retired uh, executive from the tech sector. Uh, and a uh, Harvard, H Howard University and MIT trained uh, engineer. Thank you, Tim. Welcome. Thank you so much. Well, Kathleen, maybe you could talk a little bit about, for, for the viewers who aren't familiar with Mechanics Hall, uh, the venue, uh, kind of the history of it, and that kind of will lead into our conversation about the Portrait Gallery. Sure, I'll try to make it brief, <laughs> <laughs> even though it's a long history. Um, Mechanics Hall was built by the Worcester County Mechanics Association, which was established in the 1840s by the industrialists who really changed the economy of the city and brought along uh, laborers learning new technologies. And that's the purpose of Mechanics Hall, um, to house those classroom activities, um, to have a lending library, a lecture series. But primarily, Mechanics Hall is considered one of the finest concert halls in the world mm -hmm. and uh, the best performance space um, 19th century um, in, in the country. And um, the why? Because the mechanics wanted the space to be inspirational. And so, you know, we are still on that path today um, to make it a community gathering place, a home for culture and arts and, uh, and humanities. And so, you know, in that history, there, uh, there have been some uh, incredible performers, uh, speakers, uh, speeches, events that have taken place there. And that ties into... Uh, to some extent, uh, you know, the, the, the portrait gallery and some of the Absolutely, history. Absolutely, yeah. Um, in the, in the uh, 1850s, um, when the hall was built, uh, the association was closely tied to three social reform movements. One was the abolition of slavery, also uh, women's rights, and temperance, which was important to the industrialists because they paid their folks in wages and not alcohol, which was kind of um, mm -hmm. a, an interesting twist but helpful to the community because they needed people on their toes uh, right. to work in those dangerous factories and so forth. So, so Mechanics Hall was the platform for many um, nation, nationally known um, uh, abolitionists and women's rights advocates especially in, 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 who, who often were also uh, pr uh, promoting temperance. Right. So all of those social reform activities sort of closely aligned. So we had um, Frederick Douglass spoke to uh, in Worcester many times mm -hmm. because of our association and when the hall was built he was one of the first on our stage mm -hmm. um, to uh, advocate for abolition and um, yeah yeah and so the portraits project uh, James you've gotten involved with that and yes. and part of uh, the conversation I know that's taken place at Mechanics Hall is you know over the last n number of years is uh, the portraits that are uh, adorn the hall up on the wall, really reflective of the diversity of the community and some of the movements yes. you were just talking about. So maybe James, you could talk a little about your involvement. Sure. Uh, in, next year in 2024, Mechanics Hall is going to hang, hang three portraits of black Americans. And we are, as a family, grateful that one of those portraits are of my great-great-grandparents, William and Martha Brown. Um, William was the first black member of the Worcester Mechanics Association. Uh, he was part of the 1849 fair and joined in 1867. Um, so we're just honored that uh, he and his membership and our family are being uh, part of this, this um, uh, display of uh, black history in Worcester. And James, uh, you, you gave a, a phenomenal presentation to our Chamber Breakfast Club talking a little bit about that history and how it uh, integrated with kind of some of the national conversations and movements that were taking taking place but just you know maybe if you could just for a minute to you know the the history and, and the multi-generational uh, presence of your family and uh, over the years sure sure yeah I'm often asked where, where I'm from yeah and uh, you know I say I'm from Massachusetts and they, they ask again no no where are you from before that and uh, I say Massachusetts <laughs> our, uh, our family's been here for over 300 years and across nine generations yeah. you know spanning back to when this was a British colony so um, yeah, we have a long time history and roots in New England. Yeah, and, and absolutely, and uh, uh, that history will, will be on the wall. And then uh, the other uh, portraits will include, uh, in addition to your great grandparents, uh, Sojourner Truth, yeah, and Frederick Douglass. Okay. Uh, 
Frederick Douglass, by the way, was friends of my great great parents, great great grandparents, and they hosted him at their home in Worcester. Yeah, and you shared with us uh, when when uh, your your ancestor passed away that Douglass had sent a note. Yes, yeah. yes, and that that note is still archived at the American Antiquarian Society here in Worcester. Yeah, and so and Kathleen, so there's also uh, you know recently this is kind of a continuation of an effort that was a few years ago to add to make sure there's some women represented. Yeah, well, guess what, 1999, the women were added. So it's been a long time since we got to this place. Right. And um, so we're delighted that um, we'll have two, represent two women in uh, addition to two men. Uh, Sojourner Truth, who didn't speak at Mechanics Hall, but um, s began her public speaking career middle-aged at the first National Women's Rights Convention, which was held here in Worcester in Brindley Hall, which no longer exists, but it's across the street from our building. Um, and uh, also um, James's great-great-grandmother, Martha Brown, right. who worked in the business. We didn't talk about the business. That, that's true. Yeah. Yeah, well, William owned an upholstery business and, uh, in Worcester, uh, right there on Main Street, uh, where he, uh, was, was recognized throughout Worcester as, as uh, creating very, very luxurious upholstery. And in addition to that, there was uh, some door, a leather door? Yeah, his, his son Charles took over his business, and uh, one of the things Charles did was the leather doors that are on the Worcester Art Museum. Uh, so yeah, the, the family continued through his son Charles. Yeah, and the building I think you where they were located is the Central Exchange Building, actually, where the chamber today has our You're offices. Abso absolutely right. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, so some great connections. And then, as you mentioned in your talk at the chamber, one of the things that we need to do as it relates to our 150th anniversary, which will come up in 2025, is to kind of try to see if we can track some of those membership lists if they exist. Uh, so we may may. Uh, Tap your expertise. You did some great historical research on your family and how that intertwined with so many happenings and, and events in Worcester. Yeah. Uh, we've got to kind of do that for the chamber. <laughs> right. And really, the chamber um, it took over where the Mechanics Association right. left off. Um, you know, as time went by, because they we were the gathering place for the businesses in the community, and so it's a terrific tie, I think, between the hall and the chamber. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. And I love the fact that. We're, we're finally representing Worcester history mm -hmm. as a complete story. And so there'll be a little bit of rearranging. Uh, for those who don't know, there are pretty uh, amazing portraits already in the gallery right. in the main um, performance space. And uh, there'll be a little bit of rearranging so that the narrative of the portraits, uh, when all is said and done, will be a cohesive story. So we're excited about that. Right, right. And just you know, to, to give a little pitch, if, if, if people want to learn more uh, about you know, pr programs and events that are hosted and people want to come and Absolutely. attend and buy tickets, they can do that. And then also people for their own family or business uh, related events That's or right. artists that are out there maybe want to look at the hall as a venue, how can they get in touch with I you? I appreciate that, more? Tim, uh, to mechanicshall.org. Uh, and all the information is there, including uh, our email addresses and phone numbers. So yeah, we uh, it's a gathering place for all those amazing events, uh, including the chamber breakfast this morning, which we love to have. Yeah, no, we, we, uh, we use the venue regularly. Yeah. And it has a lot of different rooms that can be utilized, so, yeah. so thank you. And, and, and James, thank you for sharing that story with us you're, this morning. You're uh, welcome. Uh, and uh, look forward to working with both of you going forward. Sure, right, thank thanks you. so much, Tim. Thank you. Stay with us, we're gonna come back for our next segment on Chamber Exchange, the TV show. These days, you've got your hands full in life. That's why we help you bank simply and securely with tools like Face ID and Touch ID. It's why we make it easy to make purchases on the go and get cash back while you're at it. Why we help you quickly deposit checks wherever you are. And it's why we lend a hand with sending and receiving money right from your phone. So even when you're on the move, you can manage your finances. Bank Hometown. Unlock your potential. 